Hello and welcome everyone back to the Outering Tinnitus podcast. This is Frida and I'm your host um, and today we have quite a special episode. Um, it's going to be not an interview guest but uh, many different guests on the show and this is because I recorded one of the recent live events that we had with the Outering Tinnitus Facebook community. Um, so we were meeting on Zoom. I recorded the meeting. Everyone was fine with this uh, being turned into a podcast episode and we had a very interesting conversation about, for example, Tinnitus spikes or uh, some one sharing their uh, experience of 13 years of living with tinnitus. Um, yeah, and I think overall it is quite an interesting uh, episode that uh, I can share with you guys out there with my listeners. Um, in my own interest, I would like to invite you to join that most positive tinnitus community on Facebook if you're interested. There's certainly enough negative communities out there. So join the most positive community um, if you are interested in uh, getting a coach by me apply to my uh, tinnitus coaching program we have a few spots open every month at outringtinnitus.com and um, also if you're interested in uh, yeah getting the beta version of the course as soon as that comes out and um, then you will find a link in the description to this episode but let's do the intro and get right into the episode of the live q a with the outering tinnitus facebook community enjoy Hello and welcome to the Outering Tinnitus podcast. This is Frida and I'm your host. This podcast is all about the tinnitus science and what you can do to live a better life despite the ringing. Um, yeah, so great to have you all here. Paulina is here from uh, Berlin as well. And um, I wanted to take a, a brief moment to, yeah, also welcome the rest from you guys into the community. If you're uh, in the Facebook community, I think that uh, the Facebook community lives off us coming together, us uh, sharing positive insights and positive um, uh, feedback with each other and also tips and tricks on how to literally uh, overcome tinnitus in a more positive way than because the internet is uh, full of enough negative tinnitus sources, so to say. But um, uh, yeah, uh, let's basically uh, open the floor for anything you would like to discuss today. Uh, questions you have for me, maybe. Um, uh, pretty much anything you guys want to talk about, uh, talk about, I'm uh, very open to do that. Um, is there anything that in particular you would like me to start with? Um, I, 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 I mean, I'm, but I'm going to bother you with this because we're already coaching it, but I, because I've been doing so much research on it, um, lately on spikes. So I thought maybe it would be useful for others to hear what you think about spikes. And I didn't know that there was such a thing as spikes. I thought that when you get tinnitus, it's like you have your sound yeah. uh, and that's your sound. And uh, I was just very surprised when a week ago I just had this high pitched um, noise that was just unbelievably high. And I've never had that before. And it's still going on. So, you know, maybe we could discuss that. But I, I know you're probably already so tired of me because I've asked, been asking you about a, it for the not, past couple of days. Not at all. I um, I think most people who are also here in this meeting today can confirm that they have had spikes before. Um, would be interesting, actually, if some of you can share whether you also experienced longer spikes or only short term spikes. Paulina, you're saying yes. How, what's that situation for you like? Uh, till now, I experienced only short term spikes. Bikes. So they last uh, just a few seconds, up to maybe one minute. Okay. But yeah, they are they are pretty loud. They are always like in one ear. Mm -hmm. They freak me out. Um, it sounds like a small kind of trompete, or mm -hmm. I don't know how to say it in English. A trumpet. Yeah, a trumpet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, trumpet, yeah. Trumpet, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I guess what I can evaluate my tinnitus as is maybe not super loud. It does not bother me as much uh, during the day. Mm -hmm. What bothers me more is my emotional reaction to it. I still cannot get used to it. I'm pretty new to it. Uh, it's with me from around one, one month. Mm. And yeah, what I also experience is when I, for example, go out and come back home, I also like hear it louder. When I'm nervous, I hear it louder. When I'm tired, I hear it louder. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, I don't know if you consider it spike, but the volume increases uh, during those situations. I guess I guess that's a difficulty, you know, that um, we don't really know whether a spike um, is uh, uh, is something that we could consider. So we do know that uh, in different parts of the brain that are also closely linked, for example, in the limbic uh, system or also the amygdala, which is our fear and panic based center. There is a lot of activity going on, especially when we do suffer from tinnitus and we and we we have that moment that we when we tune into it, we get a. A, this cortisol, adrenaline, fear-based reaction, right? And we know that um, that with that stimulus, uh, uh, with the whole stimulation in the brain being more more active, you can basically maybe compare it to when you have a lot of coffee, you have a lot of espresso, you know, and then there's like a lot going on, and you feel really like that. That's basically what happens in your brain a bit as well. So, um, for that reason, uh, we can say that the activity in the auditory cortex is also much higher. And when we are tired, um, our brain is generally less able to uh, tune out non-relevant sources. You, you maybe know that, notice that when you get very tired or you haven't slept very well for a few days, um, that it's get very difficult to focus on one particular thing. So, and that mm -hmm. is because your brain is, when you basically slept well and everything is fine, your brain is very, very good at directing attention at one single task because this is how we guarantee survival. But when we're tired, um, we basically, it becomes very difficult for our brain to basically um, uh, turn, uh, let things go in and disappear into the background. Um, and this, this partly happens when you, why you perceive tinnitus louder when you have, a, uh, uh, um, uh, when you're tired. But with a spike, um, it's usually, um, and Alexandra, I told you this in private in our coaching already, um, that a spike uh, uh, can last. Uh, some people have spikes for only seconds to minutes. I sometimes, I get spikes. I sometimes have it only 30 seconds. And then it's like so high that I can't hear anything else. So I'm deaf on one ear and I have um, my hearing aid and um, my, my difficulty hearing on my right ear. But when I get a spike, it's sometimes the tinnitus gets so loud that I'm like, oh, wow, I can't hear anything else. Um, but that's usually a, a few seconds, and sometimes it's a, a less intense spike that uh, takes maybe a few hours, but then usually it goes back to baseline. But the thing is that there is no clear definition of a spike. So there are people who go through uh, emotionally difficult periods, such as when starting to suffer from tinnitus, and then suddenly have the baseline tinnitus go up, plus getting a few other sounds because it's basically like such a stressful period of time. And that basically it tumbles all away from you. And you, you're basically thinking, oh man, the synthesis is really bad. And then suddenly you wake up and it's even worse. But why? It's because of all these emotional triggers and all this activity going on. So until you settle back down into a level that uh, is basically more baseline, and it, this is what I told you, Alexander, like the, the only thing that we can do is we can hope for the best and we can be rational about it and we can try not to trigger so much fight and flight instinct. Um, but, but, but we can't for sure say like, okay, hopefully tomorrow it's ending or if it hasn't ended in three weeks, it's definitely chronic. The, the, the scientific and medical definition, and I mentioned this as well, is up to six months, it's chronic. So I'm a bit more pessimistic. I always say like, if it's three months, yeah. um, it's, 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 I, I think that within three months, it's more likely that the tinnitus stays with you and the intensity as well. But uh, before that, there, there's so much movement, especially when people start suffering yeah. because of that, because of that trigger. From everything I read, it sounds like a spike will almost definitely go down, whatever that's, you know, and even I call the British Tinnitus Association, even they could, they even guaranteed that your tinnitus will go down to a bearable level. Like there's so few people that would have an intrusive, long lasting tinnitus for the rest of their lives. It just doesn't, it just isn't what tinnitus is about. It sounds like. The intrusiveness is, again, the intrusiveness is because the stimulus is very new to your brain and you have coupled right. the stimulus with a danger. Yeah. And as you have coupled the stimulus with a danger, your fear and panic center, the amygdala is telling your, your, your kidneys, hey, release some adrenaline, release some cortisol. We need to do something here. Something's going on. We need, we need to solve a problem. So you're triggered. Yeah. And that is why your brain cannot safely disregard the stimulus. And maybe the spike flares up, but eventually, and this is something that the brain is incredibly good at, is exactly what I said earlier on, is when it doesn't associate a stimulus with danger or, 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 or a fight or flight uh, situation anymore, the brain is safely able to disregard it. 
And uh, this is what we teach in the coaching with the various techniques with uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and acceptance and commitment that you basically like you fly in. It's a vicious cycle. It doesn't. That's the great thing about a cycle is it doesn't matter where you fly in. Um, it's always good to get out of the cycle so that you that you literally get tools that help you to basically basically just like go in and say and, and stop that mechanism and then you repeat that process whenever that anxiety flares up when that connotation that negative connotation that reaction happens you behave in a different way and when your brain realizes that so you do that multiple times and you always repeat that in the, when when the tinnitus bothers you in some kind of way and you perceive it and and and, and you do that for a prolonged period of time that will make it make it much easier for your brain to basically safely say, okay, tinnitus is not something that we need to uh, uh, put 100% uh, 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 of attention on and have this sort of reaction. But we've talked about this. This is practices that we have to put into place. And unfortunately, Paulina, for everyone else who's new to tinnitus, um, unfortunately, this is something that involves a degree of suffering um, at first, um, which we hope to alleviate here with a positive community, with experience, with uh, telling you, you you mentioned the British Tinnitus Association. They like, sorry, they can't guarantee you that the spike will disappear completely. Of course not. Neither can I. But they can guarantee you, and I can guarantee you, or we can all tell you, everyone who's experienced it, that the brain is able at some point, and there are things mm. that you can do in order to have it go into the background again. Yeah. It's it's almost like I don't know if it's because the brain gets tired of listening to it or if it's because I get so tired and um, you know I I am my brain obviously but um but but yeah I um I find it um a bit scary um, to not know but I definitely have surrendered to it like I I the, the, I'm not trying to fight it or anything but I, I'm curious uh, yeah. if it's gonna go away. Yeah. <laughs> But you understand that that like I know that it's it's near impossible to not be like okay I wonder whether it's going away or not, but in essence that is no dangerous than sitting there and wishing for it to go away. Like I'm and I and I'm not judgmental, not at all, because I've been going through this as well. Like the hope, the despair, the expectation, all of this. But it, and it's and it's completely. I I know that it's very very difficult to to accept that and maybe it's not even possible but the the best way to tackle is is to to at least accepting that you can't change it at the moment not to accept the way that the spike is there on and not to accept that maybe the spike stays or anything like that but just accept that this is what you have to deal with right now and whatever comes in future you are fully committed to working on uh, as much as you can you're doing everything in your control you're do, going to see the doctors you're getting your hearing hearing checked accordingly and you're going uh, for the coaching with me so that you can um, uh, try to reduce the tinnitus anxiety as quickly as possible and make that uh, process much quicker and this is all you can do so what i want to establish is that you have a system in your back that you feel like you know what i've taken all the steps that i can possibly take now this thing it's gonna it's gonna run from itself and i'm gonna do everything that is in my control but whatever is outside my control whatever what what can i do you know and you know yeah. in, in order to do that you let you you basically let the fight or flight instinct exhaust itself a little bit more but i know it's very difficult zanel do you want to you yeah, want to add it, something it is i mean i fully agree with, with what you're saying um and and um by the way greetings from bosnia herzegovina um, nice to, nice to see you. um uh, paulina you seem to be very new to tinnitus is, did you say one month if I yes. got it right, yes. yeah. Yes. And Alexandra, I didn't quite catch, you know, for how long you've been. Um, since since April, basically, and I've had so different different, different yeah, 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 different sounds. Well, I've been in this for a much longer period of time, and um, what Frida is saying is that the, the very fact that you actually accept that you that you're there, even though you have done, you know, A B C. You've seen the doctors, you got your hearing aid. I mean, I got mine and then I got rid of it because it's not really helping. But uh, at first I had no idea what was happening. This was back in 2008, so it's 13 years ago. Wow. And I had no idea what was happening in, indeed. It was just this buzzing in my right ear and I literally had no idea. 
what was happening. And then I went to see my doctors two, two months after. Um, and then I went on to the, a neighboring country to see some more doctors. You know, they've been giving me all different kinds and pieces of advice. And, uh, uh, and I was frustrated. I was angry. I was mad. I didn't know what was happening. Uh, I'm a university teacher. I deal with students. Uh, so I had no idea what was going on. And it was really disturbing my... my, my but what, what, what made you wait two months? To, sorry? To, one, uh, sorry, what, what made you wait two months to get help the first time? Well, because, you know, when very, I got it, I went to the hospital immediately. The very, that's a very good question. Uh, but the, the answer is very simple and it might sound trivial. I had no idea what was going on in my right ear. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, I had no idea. Okay. So, yeah. As in you didn't know what tinnitus was? You, you didn't suspect that it was tinnitus or? Um, I didn't because there was no one to, to, uh, around to tell me anything about it. Uh, when, I see, when I went to see the doctors, uh, they were all checking the possible hearing uh, loss and all these kinds of things they were sort of refusing the fact that it might have been tinnitus or and then i googled things because i didn't have the vertigo and i didn't have the uh what is the third thing many uh, the, probably right you probably some some yeah i was, I was expecting the many year syndrome and things like that but then again you know yeah, it, it took some 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 years for me to actually realize what was happening and, and get everything down on paper. Uh, but when I accepted it, it, it was just a completely different story. And uh, now I've been used to it for many, many years. And it's just... Um, it's How has not it changed for you? Has it, you know, has it changed the sound? Oh, nothing, it... nothing, nothing has changed over these past... It, it was, I know the exact date when it started, January 3rd, 2008. Wow. So, yeah, I do know. Uh, I came back from the, from, from, um, from the mountain. So they, the, the doctors weren't even uh, able to, uh, you know, pinpoint a single cause because it's not always possible to do that. Yeah. Uh, so I thought it had to do with, with, with the change of altitude, with the sudden change of altitude or something like that. But then again, the cause doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, and I was just listening to what you were saying about the brain and how the brain works. And the brain is actually there to help us. You know, you can always find ways. I mean, co coaching yourself. I mean, this is not to sound pessimistic, but because I was pessimistic at the very beginning. But I mean, it's been 13 years and I'm, I'm 48 now. Okay, so I first got it when I was 35. Um, so um, it, it and, and nothing has changed. Uh, it's just 24 seven, uh, seven days a week in my right ear with a bit of hearing loss. And um, but I'm still quite functional when it comes to my work, my family, my life in general. And I also, uh, when, I, when, I, when I got it in that first year, I spoke to some friends of mine who told me, well, you know, we've had that for years. You just have to learn how to live with it. And a cousin of mine who actually lives in Germany, in Munich, I think, had it only for two days. Mm -hmm. And he apparently all boiled down to uh, pre-exam stress in his case. Mm -hmm. It was there for two full days and it just disappeared. So I guess he was just lucky. So I don't know. Um, I guess I wasn't. <laughs> so, well, tinnitus, yeah. there, 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 there is forms of tinnitus that stay uh, for shorter period of times when you experience, for example, uh, after concert tinnitus, you know, when you when you have that muffled sound and it's just a ringing like a little bell. And uh, that's nice. basically all um, that has happened to, I, I guess, many people. My tinnitus is definitely noise and use as well. I, my right ear was always uh, perfectly fine. I was at 100 percent hearing capacity until I basically started going clubbing with uh, 15, 16, 17 years old. And then at 19, uh, uh, it started getting worse. And at 21, I started wearing my first hearing aid. And uh, now I already have my second hearing aid. Um, and, and, and tinnitus did increase a lot. And actually, Alexandra, I was... Uh, uh, similar to your story, when I first got it at 19, it was nothing to compare to uh, when it flared up in uh, 20, uh, when I was 24. So I was five years in with tinnitus and um, I was already doing a lot to protect my hearing. But then I was at uh, King's Day in Amsterdam. And I guess some of you know the story um, that I partied too uh, close to a speaker, <laughs> uh, having too many beers. 
And then three <laughs> days afterwards, I was back and I had to write my bachelor thesis. I was alone at home, basically, the mm. whole day and night and writing my bachelor thesis. And three days after, tinnitus was out of, out of insane. I, could, I couldn't hear anything mm. else nearly apart from tinnitus. I know that today it's the same intensity. So when I go to the street outside and there's cars, I can still hear it if I tune into it, but it's completely different. And what you said, Sanel, is very, very true. Is your brain is very much able to disregard the stimulus. So for me, right. people ask me like, well, how do you deal with this? How can you even live with it? How do you, sometimes yeah. people are even angry at me and it's like, yeah. why don't you worry about this? Why aren't you upset? If, if I had it, your, your intensity, I would be so upset. I'm like, it's my new, it's like my silence. I can meditate without any sounds. I can, mm -hmm. I can walk outside if it's really quiet. I don't mind. Like I, you, you know, it's your brain is definitely able to disregard these kind of stimulus in the same way that a brain is able. I, I'm taking these examples very often, like for example, to learn to walk with a prosthetic limb and making it as natural nearly as if you had a normal leg. Like your brain is naturally able to adapt to so many different stimuli and we have the tools and techniques in order to help you to get there a bit quicker. I didn't have anyone to get there quicker. I guess you, Sanel, also didn't have anyone to get there quicker. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so luckily Alexandra and uh, Paulina and uh, the rest of the people who are here, there are some people who uh, have been through this in, in, in 10 stages as well. And um, maybe we can we can help and support you to <laughs> overcome the- uh, But I guess it's hard for you when you know that, you know, your spike didn't actually, you know, get down it's probably harder for you even to, to to reassure someone like me that you know this will this will probably pass because <laughs> you're you're student really yeah um i i remember the exact uh, day i i don't remember the dates but i remember the exact date and i knew that something was wrong with my hearing because i had a bit of muffledness after i came back from amsterdam and then only three days later the tinnitus flared up so this is this uh, thing that the tin uh, 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 hearing loss which is uh, noise induced and um, if if that doesn't go away after three days so um, uh, that that's acute hearing loss and and then if that doesn't change after three days it's probably there to stay and uh, mm -hmm. at that time mm -hmm. the the recommendation was still to take prednisone and uh, steroids and stuff like that that is basically yeah. debunked now so at the charité if you go to the charité um, uh, only in very severe noise trauma cases. So if you had a firecracker exploding directly next to your ear, they will give you very high doses of cortisol. But if you had a minor noise exposure event leading to increased tinnitus, they will not give you um, uh, cortisol uh, anymore, at least not in Charité, because the, the best practice there has been evaluated that the dangers of such high doses of cortisone can be higher than the, than the, than the actual benefits uh, that studies have, have shown. Um, and I, I so know is that I'm, why I, you don't yeah. get cortisone for for tinnitus? Because I thought cortisone would help when when nerve systems in general. But you know, now we get going into a different topic. I guess it's very difficult. No, well, I can very briefly touch on it if you want to. It's very difficult to uh, deliver the appropriate amount of uh, cortisol cortisone to um, uh, the uh, inner ear. It's very difficult mm -hmm. because the, 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 the blood vessels are so small that you basically mm -hmm. have to administer such high doses of cortisone that, again, the, evaluate, the, study, the latest studies suggest that the risks um, do not uh, outweigh the benefits um, mm -hmm. because some studies show that there is a, a, a local and current improvement, but uh, sometimes, especially for tinnitus, uh, it's not done anymore because especially for tinnitus, it doesn't show a significant decrease. It's basically uh, the inflammatory process goes down. That will basically maybe help to mitigate hearing loss in the most acute phase of, uh, of an acute noise trauma. But uh, afterwards, uh, many people report that the tinnitus goes back to a higher level again. So that's why they don't, they don't do this treatment anymore because okay. it's basically an, 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 a very high level of cortisone in order to it really reaching the inner ear. Mm. No, it's just interesting because I'm because I, I had a half paralysis when I was 20, which is basically half of the nerves in the half face to shut down. And that's what they gave me for, for that. Um, and, and, you know, it worked after a month I was recovered and I could move that part of the face again. So I, I just thought, you know, maybe, you know, that would have been a connection. Um, Cortisone With, is a very effective nice. treatment, like, for example, many other things, right? Allergies, asthmatic diseases. Cortisone is a very, very powerful anti-inflammatory -inflamm agent. And we know that because our kidneys produce it exactly for that reason. Um, but it's just unfortunate that you have to deliver it in such high doses in order for it to even have slight effects on the inner ear. Um, 
compounds. Yeah. 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 Um, so so uh, I, I can I can only say that um, we 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 offer as much uh, support as we can um, with my spike. I, I I told you I I can I can remember and for me it was difficult. I could I had a tr a trouble sleeping. I. Um, I, I used the, the trouble sleeping to my benefit. I, I wrote my bachelor paper. I think half of it I wrote between 4 and 9 a.m. Um, uh, and that basically didn't turn out too bad. I don't know why. Maybe I should work at night more often. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I remember it was a very difficult period. I, I even uh, after the bachelor paper, I went to Istanbul to a conference to present something. And I remember like at the hotel, at the uh, youth hostel, I had difficulties in the evening to fall asleep. And in the morning, the first thing, I would hear the thing and wake up. And I would also remember I wouldn't be too shy on the gin when we would go on, out in the evening in order to just basically try to uh, numb it a bit with alcohol, which is obviously also not the best uh, best possibility. But um, but yeah, eventually, I, I, I think if I had known the, the techniques that I know now, I could have uh, done it much quicker. But in, in that way, I think it took me like, yeah, at least three to four months to get used to it again, properly again. And I think what I know today is that you can do that yeah, in a much quicker time, yeah, luckily. That's good. Yeah, and well, we're hoping to accomplish that. But yeah. I, I know, I know, I, I know that, that, that it can be tricky and it is tricky in the meantime. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, um, it's, it's good to hear that, you know, these successful stories are in the midst of all this negative tinnitus related saga. I mean, you managed to complete your bachelor's uh, thesis, right? Um, yes. So that's a good thing. That's something we have in common. I was actually two years after I got my tinnitus, I was, uh, and I was on a deadline already, and I had no idea how to cope with this, but I managed to uh, not only, well, I managed to complete my doctoral dissertation, which is, you know, uh, so it is possible to work through uh, and 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 while while still really suffering and not knowing what is really going on, even though you know I tried later on when I realized and when my doctors realized that uh, what was happening, I tried with different kinds of medicines and different kinds of approaches, hearing aids, but none of it really worked. So you know, mm. but you said you had some hearing loss as well. Yeah. Oh yes, uh, uh, that's that that's a different story. I I never noticed it until I um, I started having serious problems in terms of communicating with people live. Like you're sitting next to people and you have no idea what they're talking about, so you start reading from their lips, and that's when I realized this thing is not going to go away. Um, and then I somehow learned. Or maybe again, it was the brain, or maybe some other kinds of tools that we all have in ourselves somewhere inside, deep inside. When I um, um, somehow resolved these these issues, yeah. But the hearing loss is there in my right ear, and I can, well, thank God, the left one is still perfectly okay. Um, so why do you, yeah. well, what do you know why was that noise induced for you or um i don't know no. okay That's a i mean I, I mean we all have i mean you know we all have different genetics we all have different um, noise exposure level that we subject ourselves to we mm -hmm. all have uh, uh, degrees of hearing loss that basically are undetected as well so a lot of people mm -hmm. will for example and this is a bit um, a, a bit going into the science of, of hearing, but um, a lot of people have a perfectly fine pure tone audiometry. So what you would get at your normal audiologist, but then a lot of people have um, hidden hearing loss, which is a completely different story. And hidden hearing loss is basically the cocktail party effect. So that uh, your, your hearing is perfectly fine when there's not many sounds around, but when you go mm -hmm. to a place where there's different sounds and more background mm -hmm. noises, you have massive problem okay. understanding anyone. Um, that mm -hmm. is called hidden hearing loss. So that is mm -hmm. the difficulty of um, uh, from your brain separating neighboring frequencies and basically understanding the sounds. And you can have a perfectly fine um, a pure tone audiogram and still have um, a degree of hidden hearing loss. And there's a lot of studies that are going on in, uh, in mice and they're trying to replicate what is inducing a hidden hearing loss. And it seems to be mostly genetic. Um, so there seems to be an effect that 
um, as we age, we all lose a significant part of our hearing and uh, noise induced hearing loss tends to first affect the higher uh, frequencies, right? And the higher frequency hearing um, and, and then the age related hearing loss, uh, the genetic, uh, genetic hearing loss is then a hearing loss that contributes to the fact that whether how well we can hear in difficult noise situations. Actually, I'm very, I'm very good at hearing in noisy situations, but my pure tone audiometry is very bad. So mm -hmm. uh, that's so interesting. And that was so reassuring when we spoke about that because I've gone to two ENT specialists and the one um, did the test and uh, wasn't worried about my hearing whatsoever. And the second ENT did the same test and his equipment was a little bit better, but he said, well, why didn't that first ENT doctor actually react on this? Because you have, as you say, a good pure, pure what was that? Uh, tone? tone audiometry, yeah. Yeah, but you actually have only satisfactory emissions, um, which um, I didn't really know what that was, but I guess it's the hair cells or the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the how, how yeah. they are able to s send back sound. Oh, I can't remember. And also uh, some, you know, high frequency hearing loss and low frequency hearing loss uh, in each ear. So mm -hmm. there, there was a few things there, uh, but my hearing is fine. But, 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 you know, if you look at all these tests, there are things that aren't like optimal. Yeah. Another, another, another faulty thing is that most people say, um, oh, my audiologist or my ENT says I don't have a hearing loss. Um, but the problem is that the, the relevant frequencies that are tested at your ENT or your audiologist, they go mostly up to 10 kilo kilohertz. But the human, the human ability to hear could be up until 15 when we're very young, even up until 20 kilohertz, which no one can, can really hear anymore. Like that's basically yeah. a whistle, which no one hears. But, but the problem here is, is that you can have a hearing loss. That means some of these inner hair cells, they, they are dead. They, they are malfunctioning, causing tinnitus. Mm. And this will mm. not be reflected in your pure tone audiometry. That's why your mm. ENT or your audiologist said, the audiologist said you have perfectly fine hearing because he measures up to eight or 10 kilohertz, which is everything you need for sure. Because you mm. hear the birds, you hear violins, you hear even yeah. the highest of noises that usually are in the spectrum that we need to hear. But it's definitely not the full spectrum that we have and the full spectrum that could be there and potentially also causing tinnitus. And how yeah. to check when those uh, hair cells are damaged? Because I am actually this case. Uh, I went to my ENT and he told me that my hearing is okay. I've done... Um, audionometry, I think it's called, and this uh, kind of beta test. Yeah, yeah. And both of them were okay, uh, but um, I read also on internet that 90% cases uh, of tinnitus sufferers have hearing loss. So I cannot believe that I am only in those 10% who have right now perfect hearing and like, but, yeah. But that's, what I, but that's what I just explained. You probably have perfect hearing according to the yeah. audiometry of your audiologist and your ENT, but in the higher frequencies, you do have some hearing loss because those are the frequencies that it cannot be measured by the standard audiometry. And they, are, they could be measured, but they are not measured because they're not relevant for, uh, yeah. for your day-to-day -day speech understanding. Therefore, mm -hmm. when you look at your graph, it, it looks like you have a very small deviation that's basically not relevant. That's why they say you have no hearing loss. You have no um, speech understanding or... Um, you have no hearing loss that is basically categorized as a, a clinical hearing loss or, or subclinical hearing loss that needs to be treated in kind of a way or that could be uh, negatively impacting your, your, your uh, uh, levels of understanding. Um, but mm -hmm. that still means that you can have tinnitus and that can, still means that you can be part of the group. Is this common misperception of where hearing loss actually starts? Mm -hmm. It's interesting yeah. because I, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everybody, I'm Kelly. Thanks for Hi. letting me join this today, Frieder. Um, Hi. So I'm relatively new. I'm about a month okay. into just less than a month into tinnitus. And I got to tell you, it's great. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so kind of freaked me out at first. Uh, I actually had my audiologist appointment just this past Monday. And it's interesting that we this part of the conversation came up because I have slight, like very minimal loss. And that's where my ringing is, left ear. Mm -hmm. Very minimal hearing loss but still as you just said perfect hearing but i'm just wondering if that minimal loss is causing the ringing 
Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm a little bit, I'm about a month. I don't know what's causing it stress or mild hearing loss or, or what it's going to be. But, um, yeah. Pardon me. It, 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 it's a combination. In most cases, it is a combination. So stress is always also um, uh, attributed with um, increased activity in, you know, probably most areas of the brain, but uh, also the areas that are close to the auditory cortex. And then uh, some sort of hearing loss for some people starts earlier, for some people it starts later. But uh, there's also, and this is the next thing, there's people who have hearing loss because you might now ask, why do people have hearing loss? I, I know my grandpa has hearing loss, but he doesn't have a tinnitus. So why does that happen? And there is another uh, unfortunate effect, or for the people who don't have tinnitus, a fortunate effect. There is a genetic um, a, a predisposition for you having the ability in your brain to uh, basically suppress the stimulus. So, your brain, so there are people who have a genetic mechanism um, which basically tells the brain to disregard the sound. So they anatomically, they could still suffer from tinnitus because they have the hearing loss and they obviously have the same systems that we have. They have a cochlea, they have an inner ear, they have outer hair cells, inner hair cells, the same transmission is going on, but they have a mechanism in the brain which is basically suppressing the perception of the tinnitus. And that's basically, um, uh, uh, well, 85% of the people and the 15% in the population who, uh, yeah, have a different predisposition plus hearing loss, plus stress, plus very, very individual circumstances and oft, often um, uh, do uh, perceive and get tinnitus. But it's not uncommon. Eh? A lot of people, when you, when you would go to a soundproof roof, uh, room, so like a very small sound cabin, a lot of people can yeah. hear in business. Yeah, so I mean, it's, uh, it was kind of shocking at first just to explain. Like, I was really stressed out, couldn't sleep, like yeah. what's going on? Am I have a tumor or whatever, right? I was really stressed out. But for some reason, I don't know, I've kind of calmed down quite a bit. I sleep really well, even though I, you're talking about the spike earlier. I actually, like it was ringing really loud last night. So I don't know if that was just a, a mind over matter thing. But um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of just let it go. It is what it is. Um, and I threw that question in the group about the masking. I don't know if you remember. I use an AirPod Pro to kind of help mask when I need a break oh, yeah. from it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you were talking about neuroplasticity. Yeah. Is that something that can just come natural? Like if I'm relaxed and kind of just let it go over months or a year, will that eventually tune it out quite a bit? Like, is that what you're kind of saying there? Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly what's happening. So it's exactly the fact that when your brain doesn't perceive it as problem and problem solving anymore, it doesn't attribute the effect that you had at first, right? The anxiety, the sleeplessness, because when you react to tinnitus in that way, your fight or flight instinct is triggered. And I explained this to Alexandra already, that your brain cannot, uh, uh, your brain is not able to know that uh, your fight or flight instinct is triggered to tinnitus, which is actually not dangerous. Your brain doesn't know that. Your brain only knows there is something that's stressing you out. And then your brain is like, well, there's probably a bear in my cave. So I should either fight the bear or I should run away. And that's why you can't sleep. Yeah, because your brain, your brain doesn't know that there, there's a that, that there's a dangerous situation going on, which is actually not per se dangerous to you. But as soon as you do what you say, let it go, is the natural process of your brain getting used to the stimulus, not attributing the dangerous effect to it anymore. And this is a very active process. It's very active. It's not like, oh, you know what? I just have to accept it. It's not. You probably know. I don't know what your your life situation is, but you probably are someone who can let things go to some extent, yeah. And that's mm. why you, more well, I don't know, right? because that's okay. But at least that worked for you, and this is exactly what we what we're talking about. Is it creates and um, it creates a new uh, plasticity, so new pathways are created that basically know aha, uh -huh, okay. When tinnitus, when I hear it, when I perceive it, it's not linked to something dangerous. Therefore, right. I can safely disregard it. Therefore, your brain, when it safely disregards it, doesn't turn into it anymore. It disappears into the background. It doesn't disappear completely, but it disappears into the background and your burden of tinnitus suffering will be greatly reduced. And that's what we see many times with people. But there is, is certain things that we can influence. And that's what we're trying to do in the coachings in order to get that reaction in a faster way, right? you know, to basically uh, employ techniques and strategies in order to help you do just that instead of, you know, getting into that vicious cycle every single time you perceive it, whether in the morning, when you wake up, 
or um, when you're really tired at the end of the day, that you basically at first analyze when is it happening? When, I fe- when do I feel so triggered? Why do I feel so triggered? And then actively um, using some techniques in order not to feel, uh, not to struggle with it. Because when you, when you struggle with it, you know, you, you, let's say you have 100% energy on your day. You have to go to work. That's some energy. You have family. That's some energy. You have to do basic things. That's uh, you, Living is basic energy. So when you have tinnitus on top, you basically come out at minus 50 at the end of the day and you're completely depleted. But when you can let go of the struggle, tinnitus is still there. Yeah. But at least you're not struggling with it so much anymore. Tinnitus is still there, probably maybe even in the same intensity as it yeah. was before at first. But at least yeah, like it's still there. I'm still hearing it. It's yeah. not really killing my soul anymore as much as it was. And it's just kind of there and accepting it. But but I'm not freaking out. So I don't know. Hopefully the volume comes down a little bit. I'm sure it will. Gonna have to Is have yours mindset. like a ringing, you said? Is it a soft ringing or? Yeah, it's like a high pitch, like, I don't oh. know, radio frequency. Okay. So, okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Like high pitch, not, yeah. Like, you know, freaky, no, but it's a higher pitch tone. I think my masking app, it's at around 9,000. It mm. kind of, does that sound about right, reader? Oh, that's kind of very high, eh? The very high pitch sound. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it masks it out when I need a break. And then sometimes it's quieter, like during the day and you're in restaurants, you're around, you can kind of mask it out just naturally. But at nighttime, for sure, it's there. Yeah. Do you have like a hearing aid or, or you say you're listening to like music or something or like sound machine or? Uh, I do have a sound machine. It, it works okay at night. It's not ideal. I, if I have to, I'll throw the AirPod in and that works really well. And, you know, I'll just sometimes fall asleep with it on just to kind of get a break from it all, you know? Yeah, I sleep with the AirPods a lot when there's a certain sound, it's the only way because it goes straight to the air canal and sort of soothes it, so. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting new lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. okay. We can do that again. We should definitely do that again. I think it was a lot of fun. I thought, I hope uh, you guys found it helpful as well. Um, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, yeah, thank yes, you for, thank you very much. yeah, thank you for being part in the community, all of you. Perfect. All right, yeah, guys. Then, yeah. yeah, thank you very much for uh, being here, coming on tonight. Um, for anything else, just uh, ask in the community, and uh, then I'll see you next week in the next live. Have nice. a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks, Peter. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Yeah, so welcome back, guys. This was the episode with the people on the Outering Tinnitus community. I hope you enjoyed it and there was some helpful stuff for you individually in there. Um, As I said before, if you are struggling with your tinnitus and having difficulties, I have tons of resources on YouTube, Instagram, all the social media channels, but you can obviously always um, uh, come to my uh, website at outeringtinnitus.com and fill in an application for one of the coaching spots that I have uh, open every single month. Uh, You'll also find my tinnitus emergency PDF there that will help you to adopt a few steps in order to set you up on a positive path and uh, a good life despite tinnitus and yeah for today i would also like to say again as i said before um, i'm releasing a beta version of the course and if you would like to be a beneficiary of this course to take uh, those tinnitus uh, steps and measures at your own pace then um, find the link in the description to this episode Um, yeah i would like to uh, thank you guys very much for supporting me Uh, join the most positive tinnitus community the link is also in the description below Um, and let's go altering tinnitus people Um, thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for listening to the Outring Tinnitus podcast. I am looking forward to also welcome you on my website at outringtinnitus.com or if you have any questions, please mail to frida at outringtinnitus.com. See you next time.